four round of 16 matchups still to get sorted over the next couple days. A doubleheader on Friday that includes Juventus and Lyon, of course, the French side holding on to a 1 0 lead after the first leg. Manchester City and Real Madrid, meanwhile, they'll play in Manchester City holding a 2 1 lead after their victory in Spain in the first leg. For more, we're joined by Ale Moreno, Frank LaBeouf, Don Hutchison. Frank, I'll start with you. Let's start big picture form. Since the restart, who has been more impressive, Real Madrid or Manchester City? Definitely Real Madrid. I mean, they didn't lose any game. Uh, they won the Liga. They, they seem to be very compact, uh, uh, played together with a very optimistic and positive uh, uh, way of, uh, of thinking games and, uh, and uh, willing to win every game. Uh, with um, a talented Zidane, who knows exactly what to do with the players. Uh, we seem to be very done before he, he came up and, uh, and to charge again uh, that, uh, that team and, and they won the, the Liga so they find, they, 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 I think they, they feel um, very up for, for the, 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 the competition of the Champions League. Now they have to score two goals, they're not good of uh, um, leading the game so they're going to wait for Manchester City to do so and counter-attacking and and the biggest problem is they're going to miss their captains. They're going to miss Sergio Ramos, I think, for me, the, the best player in Real Madrid. You mentioned Sergio Ramos. He, of course, is suspended. Ale, we had you take a stab at what you think Zidane's 11 will be against Manchester City. What's the impact of Ramos not being there? And where else are the tough decisions for the Real Madrid manager? Well, it's a huge miss when you don't have Sergio Ramos because of what he means to your team. And... It's not only what he means physically and what he does for you out on the field, but there is a, a sense of his leadership and his presence and what that does for a group of players that needs a whole lot of confidence in order to have an opportunity to overturn this result. Now, as for what I think Zidane is going to do, uh, Militao will play alongside Varane, Mendy will be on the left, Carvajal will be on the right. And then the interesting decision for Zidane is to... Uh, to make sure that he has enough balance out of the midfield and, and the attacking players. So Benzema, you know, he's going to play up top. Who does he decide to go with in the midfield? Well, I'm thinking that it's going to be, of course, Casemiro, Modric and Cruz were very good towards the end of La Liga season. And Federico Valverde will play down the right-hand side, not as really as an attacking player or, or, or as an advanced player, but a guy who will tuck in and then give you some width. But most of all, he's going to give you work rate. He's going to give you physicality in the midfield. He's going to give you another player that can win the ball back. And maybe he can be the one that springs the, the uh, counterattack for Real Madrid because of his own athleticism. In Hazard becomes really, for me, the player that has to have an outstanding match for Real Madrid if they have an opportunity to go into Manchester and get the result that they want. Don, we had you uh, take a crack at Manchester City's 11, no Kun Agüero for Pep Guardiola. I guess the big question is here, what will the approach be from City? We know they like to play, but they've got a lead to defend. Yeah, they have. And when you try and pick a Guardiola 11, um, it's always really difficult, not in terms of the, the quality of player that he's got, but he always springs a surprise. Um, I was looking at my potential uh, 11, and I had a toss of the con between Otamendi and Fernandinho, and I went with Otamendi. Um, he's not the greatest centre half that they've got. That's why he's trying to strengthen the transfer market and maybe bring in Kula Valley alongside Nathan Aki, who they've already signed. But I went with Mendy at left back. I went with Carl Walker. The two holder midfield players picked themselves, Rodri and Gundawan, who were both brilliant in the first leg. They were absolutely superb as a pair. Kevin De Bruyne is a ten, and then the front three. Obviously, Jesus. This is this is a difficult one because Jesus actually played on the left hand side in the first leg, and he was stopping the runs of Carvajal. So. Pep actually tweaked that and he had Bernardo Silva playing as a sort of false nine. So it's difficult to try and get a read. My front three will be Raheem Sterling, um, Bernardo Silva and Jesus in, in, as a three in what order in terms of where they play on the pitch because Pep might spring, spring a surprise by asking Raheem Sterling to play as a false nine. Then he's got the work rate of Jesus to try and stop one of the fullbacks. So uh, that's what I think he'll do. I, th I think he'll go with Jesus as a nine, Sterling on one side and Bernardo Silva on the other and Kevin De Bruyne as a ten. Uh, it, it, the, the, the further back you go, I think it's, it's quite easy to try and, and, and pick Pep's brain, if you like. But he's certainly going to want to score goals. He's not going to be sitting at home thinking they'll just settle on a 2-1. He will try and put a number past uh, Real Madrid if they can. Ale, Rodri, the uh, midfielder for Manchester City, has said that they have a better team. Is he right? 
they had a better team had this game been played when it was originally supposed to be played. Let's not forget of how impressive Manchester City was against Real Madrid in that first leg. And that the 2-1 result was actually the best result that Real Madrid could have hoped for because Manchester City were far better than Real Madrid and really should have and could have won that game out for a lot longer than what they did. Uh, I really think that since the restart, what we have seen uh, for Real Madrid has been truly impressive in really recognizing who they are as a group, uh, being very comfortable with their shape as a team, being a team that, yeah, they're not as dynamic as you would want them to be. They're not as open as we all as neutrals would want them to be, but they are very effective, very efficient. They know themselves very well, and they're very much at peace with the fact that uh, it's a team that is going to defend first. And, and it's, it, it's hard to think on those terms when you think about Real Madrid, but that's indeed what they have become. And let's not forget about the player that Karim Benzema has been for Real Madrid this year. He has, over the last couple of months, really taken this team on his shoulders and be the real source of offensive productivity. That's why I said before that Ian Hazard becomes a, a key player in this matchup. Because you know what you're going to get from Benzema. You know what you're going to get out of the players in the midfield. You know, for the most part, what you're going to get out of the guys in the back line. Militao has a big responsibility in coming in for Sergio Ramos. But in Hazard, if you're going to go to Manchester and score at least two goals, he has to be at his very best. And I think we can all agree that he has not been at his very best consistently for Real Madrid. Before the restart... After the restart, before pandemic, post-pandemic, they need him to be the player that they thought they were getting when they made that choice. Frank, we don't know what Pep Guardiola will do, but my question to you is what should he do? Should Manchester City play the same way they always do, or should there be a more conservative approach considering it's a team with a lead? Well, difficult, uh, difficult question to answer, but I think it's, uh, you don't chase your nature and uh, the nature of uh, Manchester City and the way that Guardiola sees uh, football is, uh, is getting the possession, you know, attacking, um, whether uh, you want away from home and you should only maybe stay at the back and pay contra-attack. I think those players don't know what, how to do that, uh, first, and second, I think, they're not sh uh, strong enough defensively to play like that. So it's better they attack. It's better. It's better uh, to to have that positive attitude going forward. Because if they score one goal um, or in, even two goals, because one goal is going to be the same. Man Real Madrid will have to score two, but two goals, which is m more than possible for Manchester City, is going to be almost impossible for Real Madrid. So I think. Don't change your nature. Play like you know to how to play, and, uh, and and see what's going on. Don, wouldn't that play right into Madrid's hands? No, but I, th I think Sebi. I think if if you're Guardiola, he'll, he'll never change. There's not a chance that Man City will sit back and try and defend a two-one lead. It's it's not going to happen. It's not in his nature. I don't think the players that he's got would particularly enjoy trying to do that. It's not in their nature neither. I can't imagine if you asked Bernardo Silva and Raheem Sterling and Kevin De Bruyne, although they would do it because they're team players, you wouldn't then get the best out of him. Like Frank said, if you're Man City and you're Guardiola, you drum home to that group of players that you get the first goal in the game, that more or less kills a tie. Frank's right. I mean, the chances of, of Man City scoring two, you'd say, are pretty good. Can then Real Madrid, Madrid get then four and five? Highly unlikely. Well, thank you very much for watching ESPN on YouTube. For more sports highlights and analysis, be sure to download the ESPN app. And for live streaming, premium content, and let's not forget as well, ESPN FC, seven days a week. Subscribe to ESPN+. Plus.